Let's bring in our guest to discuss this. We have joining us this hour, National Trial Attorney Michael Jaffer with us. Michael, what do you think in terms of the deliberation? Do you think we're going to see a lengthy one, or is it going to be rather short? This was a pretty short trial, just four and a half days of testimony. I'm hoping that the deliberation will be a little bit longer because I really hope that the jury really takes their time and really examines this. We've seen some pretty good juries. I'm hoping that this is another one of them. Um, I'll be honest with you, I love Dr. Andrew Clark. He was my favorite witness, expert witness in a long time, right? I think he's the most likable psychiatrist I've ever seen on the stand ever. And I've seen over a thousand trials where an expert was testifying, right? I think that the defense met their burden. Their burden It's their burden to prove that she was not guilty by reason of insanity, right? They have to prove it. I felt that they've met their burden. I felt like that Dr. Andrew Clark, I mean, what would the jury believe? That Carly Gregg paid him a bunch of money to come into court and lie? He was very convincing and he was very sure that this girl did not appreciate the wrongfulness of what she did and that they met the, 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 the McNaughton standard, right? At the end of the day, every single question that was asked of him, he had an answer. Well, if she had dissociative fugue, why didn't she, you know, why didn't she panic? He explained to them. Medically, you're not going to panic if you don't know that what you did was wrong. If you thought that what you did was wrong, you would panic. But the reason she didn't panic it shows that she was exhibiting a complete disassociative state, disassociative fugue state, right? So I believe that Dr. Andrew Clark helped the defense meet their burden. We'll see what happens. At the end of the day, her father, the victim, testified in her favor.